Can you hear me? Yeah, we, we hear you now. We hear you okay. now. Okay. okay. So, and then you can see that uh, my PowerPoint. All right. So, good morning, isn't everybody? I am talking to you from the Zabon. As uh, I was uh, only as um, international delegation speaker who is just participating as, um, in this in the conference yesterday. As, and probably as I'm very lucky, as, and because uh, doubly lucky, because um, I'm from Japan. And then at the moment, I'm living in Rome for my sabbatical. So that um, Japan and that Rome, the both are uh, non-risk countries, so I could then travel us uh, very freely. Now I'm talking about us uh, today. Who wants what internationalization in Japan? I slightly change us uh, in the title because in the first title I sent about six months ago, and then um, so this is a uh, talk fairly long as about the local situation. And then hopefully I don't bore our son or the uh, audiences today. And then I hope the audience can take some information about us in Japan and with you. Now I'd like to ask in the start us um, how I like to us uh, make clear and uh, distinguish internalization from globalization. And then the first globalization is in the force, nobody can control. And so nobody really can't control the free movements of things, money, people, and information. And then of course, we have just come to bitter realizations of some really how uncontrollable globalization is in the from COVID-19 which has been rampant for more than six months. And then our internalization is internationalization is in contrast and the strategy or choice and the groups and uh, institutions can take uh, in order to respond to the demands and the problems it is set by uncontrollable so globalization. In my paper, I'm going to, uh, I'm hope, hoping to demonstrate there are three actors of internalization, internationalization of Japanese higher education. And although they represent us and the different institu us, um, institutions and their so the interests differ from each other, what internationalization they officially want are not significantly different from each other. So these actors are business and industry, and then the some, some also the public administrations, and then the some, the some higher education. Then the, so now I'd like to ask and start with so the, some, the some business and the industry. What happened us um, you know, uh, to Japanese economy in, uh, in the recent uh, the years. From the uh, 1990s on, or the, since the economic bubble burst in the early 1990s, the Japanese business and industry faced the challenges of transforming their management system in the way they could win the uh, stiff international economic competitions brought about by globalization. Apart from this new management style, they found this a new kind of workforce was needed. That the workforce who can cope with and globalize business. Such workforce later come to be named global jinzai. It means in English, globally competent human resources or capital or globally minded human resources or capital. I'm going to talk about this uh, global genes uh, later on. Then the um, Japan's two largest economic association. One is in the Keidan Ren, the Federation of Economic Organization, and the Japanese version of BDI and then the Keizai Doyukai Associations of Corporate Excellence Executives have been the most vocal for the need of such 
arts and the workforces. From the 1990s, Kei Danle and Do Yukai published a large number of these reports and the surveys on the higher education and made various recommendations and proposals to public administrations and then the higher education. As uh, these are some old reports and the surveys, and you can see there's a really there's a large number of the report under the surveys that they are some published, and then those written in red are some the reports of the surveys I'm going to some mention later, or the sun code directly from them. Now, so there are many reports and the surveys, and Kei Dan Le and Do Yukai published. Us. Um, so this, um, from them, I have found three major demands in their report and the surveys. First us, um, was, is, was, is us, uh, they were um, using the international university students who are very likely to be us, employed by us, and enterprises. The second one's the demand was to make science, technology, PhD students more innovative and then creative so that they could lead technological inventions in innovations in our company labs. The third demand was the university governance was to be reformed and then to modernized. What exactly are Kei Dan Len and then the Do Yukai really, uh, really want by internationalizing Japanese us and the students of the higher education is uh, really securing the good number of employable youth. And the governance must be reformed in the way universities meet the demands of the business and the industry. Since the 1990s, Japanese business industry realized their international competitiveness has declined, that their business has staggered, has stagnated. The cause of all these were ascribed to the lack of workforce that could compete with their global rivals. The author of 2011 Kei Dan Lin report analyzed I quote, you can see it on the screen. It has been this, uh, considered for a long time, source of this uh, competitiveness of the Japan, where the natu natural resources are not scarce, nothing but human resources. Now there's the world, worldwide competitions for highly, highly talented human resources arsons is intensified. Our country is lagged behind in fostering human resources who have the capacity to adapt oneself to globalization. Now, there's some highly talented human resources, all global and all capital, which have the capacity to cope with the global business is called by so called um, global ginseng. This uh, terminology which began to be used widely from this, around 2000. Let's see how global ginseng is defined by Kei Dan Lin reports. So you can see that the same quote on the screen are some Japanese and then foreign workers who can take on the job globalizing the business activities of Japanese enterprises and the succeed in global business in 2011. Or those who have creativity, resolution, activeness, and proactivity, intelligence, and then comprehensive capability to innovate. The most reports also refer to the language as the competencies in which anyone who wants to be global jinzai needs. But this isn't exactly what the vast majority of Japanese students lack. I remember this when TOFU rankings by country was published in 2016. They shocked not only the educationalists and the English teachers, but then also business executives and the industrialists. Japanese average was 26 among 29 Asian nations, then the third from the, side, that's the bottom. It is true, so little progress has been made over so many decades 
and the improvement of the language com competency of the Japanese. In desperation, Keidan Lee seek global Jinzai in the uh, graduate of international schools and then English speaking overseas students rather than Japanese. One report says employing the foreigners who graduated from Japanese universities means obtaining more talented human resources. If the workforce is uh, diversified in the way such enterprise can revitalize its business and strengthen its international competitiveness. Is there any problem in the kind of internationalization that the business and the industry wants? It is internationalization that the seek output that is a quick result rather than just an outcome, which is the mid or long term result. Or in another interpretation, it seeks an output, which is a material rather than as an outcome that is in the wisdom. This and also internationalizations serve only its own interest, which is in the secure globally competitive workforce, the global Jinza. Thus, an idea of global Jinza itself is a problematic. It is made of two Chinese characters and a two concept. Jin means in the person, and this, um, it, it's um, this, uh, zai means material. And this, uh, so it's uh, in this compound word, person is regarded as a material or object. And this is in a clear case of reifications of human being. Now, since I'd like to move on to the, the second actor of internationalization of higher education, which is in public administration. Now, I'd like to concentrate on the talking about as a mixed as um, ministries and education, our sports science, and then the technology. And so because of some time restriction, the so Ministry of Economy, Trade, and the Industry, METI, is another influential body in the internationalization of and higher education. Mix decide it's a higher education policy consulting in the in-house advisory council, such as the most importantly, Central Council for Education, ASAN, and its sub subcommittee for tertiary education. In recent years, the cabinet office and the prime minister's advisory organization make direct influence ASAN, on Mix and educational policies. MEX carry out its policy by allocating competitive funding for internationalization to universities. So for the internationalization of postgraduate programs, 300 million euros is set aside in 2012 alone. Then the funding for internationalization, internationalizing undergraduate programs started with the project for founding internationalization basis and the networks, better known as the Global 30. So it funded 13 universities for establishing new programs taught in English and then does admit mostly international students. Originally, Max and planned to support 30 universities. That's why it was named Global 30. But the budget they and the prepared was and the too small to support them all, so that in the end they selected 13 universities. In 2011, MEX began inter-university exchange project, Alias Reinventing Japan project. Each year, MEX and invite university interested in enhancing student exchanges with the university in the country or in a group of countries or and our region or a group of regions de designated by the ministry to apply for this competitive funding. Each funding lasts for five years and the funding can be in the use for student scholarships. The Sun country and the region selected for the first student exchange were East Asia, China and the South, Korea, USA and then the Europe. Then in 2012, the partnership was in ASEAN countries, 
in the next 2013 with an ASEAN countries again, but with that of Singapore in 2014 with Russia and in India in 2015 with South America and South America and the Turkey. And in 2017, also with East Asia, China and South Korea again. In 2018, with Russia, Russia and India again. In 2019, with the USA and the EU. And in 2020, with the African countries. Reinventing Japan project has its specific problems. Countries and the regions with which the mix to promote students and mobility are chosen for more political than educational reasons. ASEAN countries are selected four times. They are some politically and economically important for Japan because the Japanese government made a contract, for example, with the Vietnamese government for constructing new nuclear power plant and was competing with China for the construct in a contract for building a high-speed railway in the San Indonesia in the early 2010s. In 2013, Prime Minister Erdogan of Turkey and the Prime Minister Abe signed the contract for building a nuclear power plant. Turkey was included in the Inventing Japan project partner in 2015. In 2015, President, um, as the Prime Minister Modi of India and the Prime Minister of Abe agreed in their summit meeting, Japan would construct a high-speed train. India was selected twice as the partner in, in the Inventing Japan project. Mr. Abe met President Putin 27 times, and then each time he tried to raise an issue of the return of South Korea islands to which Japan continued to claim their territorial rights. Russia was selected twice as a reinventing Japan and the project. Another problem with the reinventing Japan project is the certain universities monopolizing the funds. University of Tokyo is a winner of 12 funds, which is a double the number of the three runners up, Hokkaido University, Waseda University, and Keio University, which won six funds. There are over 800 universities in Japan, but only 13 universities have won the fund more than three times. And around the 700 universities either never have applied for or never awarded within the fund. It is an also a problem that the vast majority of funded programs have been concerned with engineering, medicine, both in social science and some minute number of us and them are with an arts and the humanities. The next two fundings was a lot larger in size than the Reinventing Japan project. Top global university projects originally promised each winner of the funding should have received 17 million euros for the initial five-year period. Go Global Japan Project is an alliance for support programs for nurturing global human resources to lead the development of the economic society. Through this main title, MEX revealed what sort of internationalization they want and why. Go Global Japan project was managed by Japan Society for Promotions of Science, JSPS, and then the affiliated organizations of MEX and ex explain its purpose. I quote, I will support, we will support the improvement of educational system in which an internet institutions as a whole is involved in order to comprehensively strengthen students' uh, capability to respond to globalization, to foster human resources that are willing to act on the global stage and contribute to the development of an economic society. MEX itself uh, explains why they set up a top global university project. It's because a top Japanese uh, university must raise international profile and then the rankings, then I quote, we will support a small number of universities which is making original efforts to 
materialize or accelerate the collaborations with the world's top universities, endeavor to reform their appointment and the academic affairs systems, and then engage themselves in comprehensive internationalization so that the students' capabilities to respond to globalization is growing greatly as strengthened. Now that's, um, there are um, four major reasons why MEXT wants to have higher education institutions internationalizing, internationalize themselves. First, as Max itself says, it is because internationalization of higher education is needed to foster leaders who flourish globally in the business and the industry, academia, or the public administration. Second is Max wants higher education trained specifically global agenda. Then the thirdly, the Max would like Japanese and higher education institution to improve their international competitiveness. Lastly, internationalization is an also an instrumental or an excuse for MEX to get their sort of budget plans to be approved. One of the ultimate tasks of the Japanese and higher civil servant is whether it is a MEX or some other ministries to secure as much budget as they can for their ministry rather than to reduce their spendings. I find this one of the greatest problem is the way MEX and pro um, promote internationalization of higher education is it is to managerial. Naturally, the budget is limited and it may need to be concentrated on small number of institutions and a limited number of students. But in awarding and then reviewing the funds, MEX places very heavy emphasis on evaluations of cost effectiveness and accountability. This uh, managerialism certainly interferes with the more regional and then experimental internationalizations as and with more lasting effects. Now, so, so then finally, I'd like to then present the positions of higher education itself in, in internationalization. In 2013, Japan Association of National University, which is, consists of 86 number, member university and institutions, published a report on the internationalization of education in national universities. It clarifies as an aim of internationalization and follows. If our country wants to play a key role in the international community, it is essential to foster human resources by planning well to send more students abroad and receive more international academics and the students, to foster the human resources, which is the capability to satisfy the needs of international institutions, to support the constructions of educational infrastructure of developing nations and the nurture the human resources who will take on that task. It is uh, noticeable as a new dimension to the internationalization is mentioned, which is the global collaborations and the contribution. The altruistic Arutu Louistic in the position is never considered in the visions of internationalization by the business and the industry. But as the same report and present its number in you know, numerical targets to be achieved by 2020. They aimed to raise the rate of international students to 10%, the rate of number of students who study abroad to 5%. That was the rate of the international faculty to 6%. That was the number of courses taught in English and the number of the university that have numerical targets in their internationalization as a policy to 60%. Authors of the report must have been as a realist, but to be honest, the targets are modest at least. How could anybody say in Japanese national universities and internationalized if only the 10% of students are the from the overseas, the 5% of students study abroad, and then 6% of the faculties are non-Japanese. 
Japanese associations of the private university and the colleges published a survey on the internationalizations of their 127 member universities every year. But there have been this, uh, few reports on the idea of internationalization. But the 2012 report, 2012 reports contained various recommendations. Its conclusion says, as you can see on the screen, university is born as a rocky, as, uh, in which the universal truth and the value was explored. When the idea of nation state was uh, dominant in the 19th century, university too expected to be national institutions which serve national interest. However, now globalization has made and made fast advance. Western university have already uh, constructed an academic milieu in which students some from the various variety of countries and with different languages are some language backgrounds not studying. It is not healthy that the Japanese university are made of only Japanese students, faculties, and the staff. Such institution will reduce the potentiality of Japanese students and higher education. The abstract but unoriginal analysis is followed by some concrete proposals. <clears throat> the first three proposals are nothing new. This, uh, the recommendations, international collaboration in awards and awarding degrees such as double and, and joint degrees were new because they were not even officially introduced, in, introduced in, at that time. University rankings made a devastating effects on Japanese higher education institutions. Therefore, it is understandable to urge private university too to actively and participate in and collaborate with them. However, as many specialists point out, university rankings and the commercial and business and should be taken with a big pinch of salt. I have to admit these two influential associations should have registered clearly, more clearly, the pressure of utilitarian internationalization so that it only reflect the interests of the business and industry and also managerial internationalization that the public administrations promote. They should also make it clear they are on the position internationalizations and that's based on educational principle, merit, and an ideals. Not only this, uh, this and association, but also the university in general seems to have been following this uh, concept and then forms of internationalization presented by the business and the industry and the public administrations. They should have created their own principles and the forms of internationalizations and promoted them as widely. In place of a conclusion, I'd like to present as an alternative to the internationalizations that business and industry, public administration, and the top management of higher education institution have envisaged. In this age of neoliberalism and libertarianism, one of the aims of internationalizations of higher education could be to make students global citizens. I mean by the global citizens, globally minded individuals, but not merely resources or capital who are concerned with the rights and the responsibility of themselves and then others as an equal member of global community of human beings. International experiences are in, uh, invaluable for some students for both instrumental and non-instrumental reasons. They can make most of what they have gained language fluency and the multicultural and knowledge, for example, for program pragmatic purpose. But they are also invaluable just as experience for experience sake. Living and, the living and the studying abroad are some also are some great opportunity to relativize the point of view and the values. Morality also an idea, morally and then ideally, international experience and help students become global citizens to not only pursue private and corporate profits, 
but also work for public interest and the welfare. One year or the one semester study abroad may be too short for them to be a full global citizen, but I'm sure it is long enough to become the seed from which the mindset of the global citizens grows. In this respect, the public funds must be spent for the developing men and the women who have more public interests than those who work only for private and the corporate gains. If it comes to the internationalizations of research, the research the international academic collaboration must be more inclusive and their benefit must be shared and redistributed. Copyright, patent, intellectual property right must be protected, but at the same time, they should not be abstracted free circulations of knowledge. I'm sure and I am sure that and there are other important aspects and internationalizations of higher education, but I have already used up the time given to me, so I must stop here. Thank you very much for listening to me.